Welcome to the DC Daily Drop, your one-stop shop for today's important news in DC movies, TV, and comics. Here are your hosts, Tom and Zach. Hello and welcome to the DC Daily Drop. I'm Tom. And I'm Zach. With iZombie set to debut season three coming up just next week, uh, we're going to do a little rundown of the past couple seasons and get you caught up to date. So what we're going to do is basically not go point by point of everything that happened in the season but if you haven't seen the show and think you might want to jump on for season three we're going to give you enough information about the characters and the story that you can and so that's what this is for and if you think you want to start the show from episode one then probably don't listen to this because we will get into spoilers um we're not going to give you everything but some spoilers so uh, i've got a lot to run down and zach is going to jump in with any questions or anything like that all right, so yeah, season three is debuting April 4th at 9 on the CW, uh, 9, 8 Central, and it's got 13 episodes this season. Season one had 13, and season two had 19, um, so they're all available on Netflix in the U.S. right now if you want to check those out. Uh, definitely worth checking out. So this is based on the Vertigo comic, I Zombie, obviously. Um, it's a little different from the comic, but it's the same general spirit, I would say. Uh, The basic premise of this, it's basically just a regular procedural, you know, solving murders. The twist is the star is Olivia Moore. Liv Moore. Get it, Zach? (laughs) Yeah. Because she's a zombie. So she's just a normal medical student, you know, going to, you know, taking her whatever she does to become a doctor. And she goes on a boat party and there's this utopium drug that was cut with something. And everybody goes crazy, turns into zombies, and she gets scratched. And so she becomes a zombie. Um, but she doesn't like look like the textbook definition of a zombie, if you were, were right. So here's the, so in this world, there's zombies, obviously, um, but they're not known about. So it seems to be a new thing. And if you are, you know, caught up on your brains, not brain deficient, you look pretty normal, just pale and white hair. So they can sort of explain it away. They can get spray tans and dye their hair and look basically normal. Got it. So it's, I hate to make this comparison, but it's kind of like vampires in Twilight. Like, unless you know for sure, you don't know. Like, they seem pretty normal. Right. You're just like, oh, they they don't get a lot of sun. And that's yeah. it's also, I don't know where Twilight's set. Somewhere, is it Seattle? Is it, yeah, it's, it's like out there. west somewhere, I think. So this is set in Seattle, too. And so it's like, well, there's not a lot of sunlight, it's raining, so maybe she just doesn't get out much. So, yeah, that's what zombies like. But if you don't get your brains, uh, they don't say how long, but in the comics it's once a month, you basically degrade into the the classic zombie where you're like, um, you know, Dawn of the Dead, whatever, where you're just a mindless idiot and just eating, ripping people's head off for brains. Got it. And once you do that, there's not really any going back. Ah, uh, okay. To normal, to normal then. So when this happens, she breaks up with her fiance because she doesn't want to make him become a zombie. Shuts off everyone, and she gets a job at the morgue. Smart. <laughs> so basically, she has access to brains whenever she needs them. Uh, eventually, so we pick up a while after that, and she uses the brain so when you eat the brains of someone you basically get the memories and personalities of that dead person oh boy so like if you if you think what tom cavanaugh does on the flash is good you, you should see what um rose mciver has to do every week because she's she's literally a new character every week you know? That's awesome. she's got a totally different personality and um so like she does a great job with it too but she'll be like a one week she's a, a gambler you know, and then next week she's a, a pathological liar and she just lies about everything <laughs> or she'll be like a real housewife and it's just completely different. And it's really, it's really pretty funny. That's where some of the best comedy comes from. And so, but there's still like her real self underneath there somewhere, right? Right. It's her. It's like she has, she's her, she's got all her memories, but she gets the personality. Uh, so her personality sways more towards um like wh- whoever she ate so like she, she actually explains it like sometimes she's always britney spears but sometimes she's hit me baby one more time 
Other times, she shaves her head off and smashing car win- windows. <laughs> Britney Spears. So it goes that it, it sort of goes like that. Um, but yeah, the main premise is every week she eats the brain of a dead person who is murdered, and so to make herself feel useful, she uh, helps solve their murders. Mm. Basically, so she occasionally, when she sees something that is, you know, similar to what she what the dead person saw, like she'll get quick visions and it'll help to solve the murder. And she works with detective Clive Babineau. She sort of follows him along on a lot of stuff. And he, he has, he tells her, you know, or she tells him that basically we, she gets visions. She said, he says, she says she's psychic and that's sort of how they explain it. And he sort of goes with it. Okay. Um, so they work together. It's pretty funny the way they do that. And, um, so her boss in the morgue is Dr. Ravi Chakrabarty. He's mm-hmm. he's really cool. He he's very much like the Win or the Cisco of the show. Um, basically, she he figures it out pretty quick that she's a zombie. Yeah, and so she he supports her and um, is really cool about it and tries to find a cure actually for the zombies. So he he's always um, working with mice and infecting mice and then trying to try out cures on them. Okay. Uh, some of the other characters are Major Lily White, who is her ex fiance. Um, he's pretty cool about it. Like she just changed all of a sudden, but he's cool with it, and he's a he's a good guy. Um, Blaine is actually a terrible guy. He's the one who infected Liv, and so um, we'll get into that season when, when we break down the individual seasons. But he's sort of he, he's just a bad guy. He's a bad zombie. Yeah. Um. And Peyton Charles is her her best friend from from college, and their roommates. Uh, so, does any of that make sense so far? Yeah, all makes sense. It's actually a pretty kind of unique setup. It's interesting, you know. I think it's kind of cool that she can use the fact that she's a zombie to still help people. <laughs> yeah, and it's very different from like a normal zombie show or what you would expect from zombies. So it's it's overall it's smart and fun. It's like really smart and fun writing, and it's it's cool to watch. But there's not what you. It's not like dark and gory. You see some full on zombie mode, which is another thing I should mention. Um, when Liv is threatened or hungry, she can break into full on zombie mode. Basically, her eyes go red, and she gets super strength, and you know, basically becomes kind of a superhero. But it's not like a superhero show. It's not like. She's not doing that every episode. She does it maybe a handful of times in the two seasons. Yeah. Yeah. So basically that's it. Every episode they're trying to solve murders. Um, And there's also the sort of the ongoing story of what's going on with the zombie population. So early in season one, she she thinks she's the only zombie at first. And then in, in season one, she finds Blaine. And it turns out he's actually making more zombies. He basically scratches rich people and then charges them 25 grand a month for brains <laughs> to deliver brains to them. So he, that's kind of smart actually. <laughs> yeah, I suppose in a terrible way in an evil <laughs> genius kind of way. So yeah. But the thing about that is, is he, um, starts killing homeless kids. Mm, that's not cool. That's not cool. Yeah. So he starts killing homeless kids and a lot of them major is a social worker. And a lot of them, you know, he knows a lot of them who have gone missing. So he goes after them, finds out, um, and he basically goes shoot up. Blaine worked for, in season one, he worked for a restaurant called Meat Cute. And uh, that's sort of where he gets all the the recipe. You know, he makes special brain food. Got it. (laughs) Um, But so Major finds all this out and he basically shoots up the place and kills off a bunch of zombies, a bunch of bad zombies, except for Blaine, who gets away. And then in season two, it sort of expands more into um, there's a, a growing zombie problem, and it turns out that there's this energy drink company called Max Rager <laughs> that um, <laughs> that is partially responsible for the creation of zombies, and they want to eliminate the problem. And their CEO... Von Du Clark is a real jerk. He's like a classic over the top villain, like a bad guy. Energy drink, you know, he's CEO of an energy drink company and 
really energetic and jerky and everything. Yeah. Um, so they want to get rid of the zombies to not tie them back to that. And so Major has become a sort of a zombie detective because he's able to, because he was actually, he had to become a zombie and then not become, he got a cure for it, a temporary cure and uh, is able to detect them. So he goes out and supposedly is killing them, but really he freezes them. And um, so until they find a cure and it, it sort of gets wild. Where are they storing all of these frozen zombies until they have a cure? So he's got a storage facility in a few giant freezers. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so he just drops them in there. Uh, yeah. So he's being investigated because, you know, there's, it looks like there's a serial killer on the loose. Um, but yeah, eventually he gets, it all ends sort of in season two with uh, a big breakout uh, or there's a big, there's a lock-in party at the Max Razor facility where it's locked in. And then these idiot scientists, uh, take some of the tainted utopium and turn into zombies. And basically there's a zombie outbreak that's all contained within the building. Um, so that's where it's really cool action where Liv gets to shoot some people up and Clive. So by the end of season two, basically everyone knows that Liv is a zombie. Um, mm. Everyone, you know, all of her friends. And so now everyone knows they shoot it up and get rid of, contain the zombie problem somewhat. So there's no outbreak, but this lady was trying to buy Max Rager um, and Von Duclerc was eaten by some zombies. So, um, the lady who buys Max Rager it is revealed she is a zombie. There's a bunch of zombies, and she kind of wants to lead a zombie uprising. With the help of Max Rager. Right, in mm-hmm. all of that. Interesting. <laughs> so, uh, why did, why does she... Do they say why she wants more zombies? No, she just... Um, It's sort of revealed... This is just revealed at the end of Season 2, very end. It looks like what they're going to pick up in Season 3, but she... I don't know. She just she just doesn't want zombies to be in hiding. She wants them to be the sort of superior race. Got it. That's kind of short sighted because you're gonna run out of brains eventually. But um, so one question I did have about Liv Moore, Olivia Moore. Um, when can she infect other people? I'm assuming she can because she's a zombie. Yeah, and she has a couple times when she has to. You know, it's just a simple scratch. Okay. So she hasn't accidentally infected anybody yet? No. And, and that's sort of her thing with um, Major. They don't know if or how it gets transferred. Mm-hmm. You know, like, can it be transferred yeah. through saliva or, or what? So they're sort of afraid to get together and they sort of stay apart because of that. Yeah, makes sense. Although now Major is a zombie at the end of season two. So, so they can get back together now. Potentially. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose. All right. Yeah, that's definitely way different than the other DC shows we're watching right now. And like you said, it's not it's Vertigo, so it's not even like in the same universe or anything, but Right. Um it's a very interesting concept, especially the fact that she uses her zombie powers to help people. Right. It, it's it's really just a procedural with a cool zombie take. And it's not it's not really like a scare. I don't I wouldn't want to see a bunch of gory zombies running around but it's a it's a fun it's relatively lighthearted there's a lot of good drama in it but it's it's relatively lighthearted for zombies yeah all right well any questions then no i think you did a great job covering it well all right well that is all we've got for today thanks for listening and we'll be back again tomorrow thanks for listening and make sure to check out dc daily drop on twitter facebook and dc drop by tomorrow for more dc news